Gemacast listeners, Hover would love to find a domain name for your passion. They'll automatically take 10% off your first order at the checkout using promo code JOMOCAST. My name is Christina Crook, and I am the author of The Joy of Missing Out. I want to welcome you to the JOMOCAST, a brand new podcast for founders and creators seeking joy in a digital age. JOMO is the joy of missing out on the right things, life-taking things like toxic hustle, comparison, disconnection, and digital drain in order to make space for life-giving commitments that bring us peace, love, meaning, and joy. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the JomoCast. I wanted to read a couple of very wonderful, exciting reviews that I've had trickle in over the last couple of weeks. One is from Jennifer Fowler. Jennifer Fowler is a former neighbor of mine. She's also the producer of an international award-winning podcast on the CBC called Finding Cleo. And she tweeted last week to say, just caught up on latest episodes of the JomaCast with Christina Crook. Thoughtful, relevant conversations about ditching, digital drain, and replacing that lost time with things that truly matter. Thanks for these episodes, loving them. Thank you hugely to Jennifer. The other one I wanted to share with you is a message that I received from Ireland. She says, hi, Christina. This is Laura from Ireland. Hi, Christina. I wanted to reach out to you personally. I'm a friend of one of your other friends, and I've just listened to your conversation with Salima Ibrahim, which was absolutely wonderful. It gave me chills learning her backstory because it sounds like she was in the Middle East for work at times when our family was there as well. I'm writing from Brussels, to which we moved about two months ago after a tour in Berlin. Anyway, you and she kept me good company as I folded laundry and tried to make sense of my new community, imagining what possibilities might be in store. So thanks for offering such thoughtful, well-done podcast. And I wish you all the best as you continue to spread the good word about the joy of missing out. I just wanted to say that these comments, these reviews really are fuel in the fire for me and Tom Inge, my producer, to keep going with the podcast. So thank you for your kind words. Thank you for posting them as reviews on iTunes and Stitcher and iHeartRadio and wherever you subscribe. They all help take this podcast further. And if you haven't already shared the podcast with a couple of friends, could I ask you to do that this week? Can you tell a few people? That would be amazing. All right. So this week on the podcast, we are speaking with Christian Villamarin and Alana Harvey, who are the creative minds behind Flipped, the app that demonstrates how digital well-being and productivity are naturally compatible and how Jomo is not about turning your back on tech, but changing your relationship to it to one that's intentional, healthy, and positive. I met Christian and Alana in Toronto when they invited me out for coffee after reading my book a couple of years ago, and it's been incredibly exciting for me to see this local Toronto tech startup, which is focused on digital wellness, grow and expand and transform over the last couple of years. My particularly favorite parts of the conversation I had with them in downtown Toronto were about how launching and leading a successful startup is possible while holding space for active hobbies and building outside commitments and relationships outside of work. Alana and Christian are a couple. Uh, They're both athletes and they do a really great job of holding the joys of their outside of work life um, in balance with the joys of also building their company, which is also a great joy for them. Uh, Another thing I really liked about this conversation is uh, we got into a conversation about how you build a business. You know, we hear a lot about why Simon Sinek's, you know, uh, very successful TED talk about start with why, but we got into a conversation about the how of building a company being as equally, if not more important. And the final thing I really enjoyed about this conversation was hearing from them how they together are building healthy tech habits as a couple. And they have some really awesome suggestions and that comes near the end of this interview. Enjoy this week's episode of the Jomocast. Thanks for listening. 
I'm sitting with, correct me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, is it Christian Villamarin? Yeah. Okay. And Alana Harvey of Flipped App. Welcome. Thank you. The Jomocast. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Very exciting. <laughs> so Alana and Christian reached out to me a number of years ago when I feel like Flipped was just an idea or was just starting out. A long time ago. I think it was probably like 2015, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And a lot has happened since then. So I'm really excited to sit down with you both. So we are in downtown Toronto. I usually like to set the scene. So we're right in the hub, kind of what you would call Toronto's... Uh, Times Square. Times Square. (laughs) More or less. (laughs) More or less. So it's very busy getting in here this morning. Yeah. Even some of your team members aren't even in the office yet because of subway delays. Yep. It's all part of reality. Um, So I wanted to start off, uh, obviously, this is the JomoCast. It's a podcast where I talk to founders and creators who are embracing the joy of missing out to thrive in a rapidly changing world. Um, I wanted to start off by asking, and maybe ask Christian first, um, what does the joy of missing out mean to you? For me, I think it just means living in the moment, not really thinking what, what is happening elsewhere or what is someone else doing. It's like, I'd like to live here where I am today. And that's sort of the way that I live life. I don't really care about what other people are doing if I'm not there. Um, and then if I'm with someone right now, um, with, if I'm with Atlanta, if I'm with you, I, I try to bring all my attention to this moment. And Work is still happening behind me, but I'm not thinking about what's happening there. I'm just, I'm here with you today. That's what it means for me. I love it. How about you, Alana? For me, it's about getting lost in the moment, um, really immersing yourself in moments that, you know, it, it could be five minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, a whole day, and you're just sort of there, fully present. You know, for us, it's when we go for a run. Um, for you, I know it's when you're swimming, like you you just get in this like zone that nothing else matters. For me, it's cooking or honestly petting my cat for like five minutes. And it's it's just these feelings where you nothing else really matters except that exact moment that you're in, no matter how big or small. Um, and I think that our phones and technology can really get in the way of that, which is why I, I worry for people who don't get to experience those moments often enough. So you kind of touched a little bit about how, how you're personally embracing those things. You're talking about swimming, running together, cooking, petting the cat. I love that example. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like Jordan Peterson talks about like when you see a cat, like you should always pet a cat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could sit there and just like stare into her eyes and just be like petting her face. Or like, any cat. I've yeah. seen it walking <laughs> in the neighborhood and it's like, there's a cat. I got to stop and pet it. We're just like, we got to keep moving. We got a destination to get to. <laughs> Because I think a lot, and and we're going to get, you know, pretty deep into this today, talking about Flipped and the ways that it's intentionally helping people disconnect from technology. But I think, and I'm curious to hear your experience with this, that when I speak to people about the removal of technology, it kind of sets people into a panic. But if you start to talk to them about the things that they can fill those spaces with, like those positive, joyful moments of being present to your loved one or doing an active hobby that really gives you a lot of joy and meaning and also just personal benefit physically petting your cat um then people can start to wrap their heads around okay yeah this is worth it for me have you encountered a bit of that in your work and and in the ways you've been developing the app I, i guess the question is um when you talk about the removal of technology or reducing screen use do you the people that you speak to on a daily basis have anxieties around that and how do you kind of work them through those anxieties? I would say that it sort of begins with how Flipped is positioned. So we are, we have two different uh, business channels. The first is for regular consumers who go, hey, I have a problem with using my phone too much and I want to use something that will motivate me to spend time away from my phone. Um, and that's exactly what Flip does. And we help you celebrate, you know, the 30 minutes, hour, and in many cases, like whole entire days, our users. It's will the intention that the person off. is making, right? Right. Um, and they they celebrate those moments. They love to track it. So it's it's about seeing that you are spending your time away from your phone productively or doing something that makes you happy and and feel like you're accomplishing something. Um, where we've had definitely, I would say some pushback would be in cases where we're going into a classroom, 
um, and flipped is being used to help increase engagement. Um, and our, our professors who are like champions of flipped are like, this is going to help you guys. I swear, like, you know, if you flip off the entire semester, you'll get a hundred percent of the bonus marks that I'm offering here. And there's just those handful of students who are like, there's no effing way that I can do this. Like, are you kidding me? And like, they're angry. And those are the ones that use their phones the most. So like, they're the ones that need it the most, but they're like, I don't, you can't tell me to do that. Right. Um, But that's what what we want to do with Flip. It's sort of like self-awareness. If you realize that everyone's around you is not using their phones, it's okay for you not to use it. And you kind of have to be surrounded by that environment or people that you notice are not using their phones. I think we kind of influence our friends when we're all together and mm-hmm. no one touches their phones. It's like, oh, yeah, everyone makes a joke now. Like, oh, flip off, Alana. Why don't you flip <laughs> off? Like if I'm on my phone when I'm with my friends and like it's it's it catches on. And I think that um, it like Christian said, it's just creating a level of awareness that wasn't there before. Um, and also having that that sort of champion, the person like you, like us, who's who's saying, hey, guys, like it's really not so bad. Like you can handle it. Especially for an hour of lecture, I find it so funny when we get like pushback like that. Um, but like I said, it's it's especially with instructors, they recognize like how important it is for these kids because a lot of them are uh, first year university students. No one has ever told them, hey, like unplug, it's really good for you. Um, and so when we see the benefits at the end of the year, like they get better grades, there's higher attendance in all these classes, we know that we're doing something right. Hmm. Um, I mean, they will say to their professors, I actually enjoyed that no one else was using their yeah. phone and it becomes part of like a joke like, in I the class. Enjoy, but I enjoyed that no one else was on their phone. <laughs> <laughs> so we've, we've always been focused on like, not like, like the carrots or like making it a good experience and not telling you how much time you're spending on your phone. I find like that is the wrong way right. to go about yeah. it. Yeah, iOS screen time being the stick on the yeah. alternative. Like if factors. your Fitbit told you how much time you spend sitting down, you're like, I do not want to wear this Fitbit ever yeah. again. Um, <laughs> right? Like you we do. it down for 18 hours today. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, if you focus on like the time that you were standing and walking, what did you do when you were taking those steps? Yeah. And it's like, regardless if you do 10,000 steps or 5,000 steps, you'd end up walking and it was good for you. And yeah. we're trying to do the same thing with flip. Those. five minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, the full day. We all have different goals. We all have different lives and it's a different milestone for everybody. And you can't just put everyone on the same place. It's like, if I spend an hour a day on my phone, you must spend an hour. Mm-hmm. You might just, 30 minutes might do the trick for you, right? Yeah. It's like running. Some yeah. people get their runners high and when they run, for 10k some people with 5k some people they need to run like 20k <laughs> right so it varies okay so let's take a few steps back just so people when people know what we're actually talking about when we're talking about flipped so i heard you talk about the ios so obviously um that's been an awesome i personally think it's a great addition to the operating system for people to see their screen time use but you're right that it is framed in that negative sense of and I find that's very powerful for people when I do workshops or talks you know when you walk people through and show them how they can check those things there is this shaming element to oh wow this is a bit of a wake-up call but I really like how you're talking about framing it positively you're right if someone had a Fitbit or this thing strapped to their arm every day that's like basically a shame odometer right yeah. like you feel really bad all the time about the time you're not active so let's talk about flipped and the app and how um it's tra- like what it's actually tracking and how it's motivating people to use their technology more mindfully yeah so uh very simply put uh flipped is sort of like a, a, a screensaver that when you turn it on um as long as you keep it on uh that means that you're not using your phone um, so you can exit out of it at any point if you decide you want to quit, um, but you have to be intentional about that. And it, it means that you've sort of ended your session. Mm-hmm. Um, and our users will tag their sessions. Um, you can start one that's called study for, for three hours. Um, or there's one that's um, all day and that's eight hours? 12 hours. 12, that one's 12 yeah. Um, and so what, what you, what you end up doing is you can see sort of how your time is being well spent, um, across all of the different activities that you do off when you're spending time away from your phone. Um, so it's empowering people to take the screen time, like, uh, stats, what they're seeing there and actually correct it by going, okay, this is all the time I'm spending away from my phone more positively. Yeah. We're very focused on the time we'll spend and the activities that people are doing. Whatever time we'll spend means to you, Um, studying, sleeping, exercising. We all have a different definition, but it's setting the intention to 
I'm going to put my phone away to do X. I'm going to go read mm-hmm. for an hour. And and within that hour, you might pick up your phone, Flip reminds you, hey, you're reading, get back to what you're doing. Right. And and that's that's what we're trying to help people is just be reminded of their intentions and, and continue improving those those goals. We all have 24 hours. So how are we spending those 24 hours per day? And that's why it also works um, in the classroom, like I described, um, because a couple of years ago, when we first started this, we were initially just a consumer facing app. Um, but we realized that there are a lot of educators out there that are really struggling with how to engage their students. I spoke with one the other day who was calling his 2008 to 2014 teaching years his golden years, and that everything since then has just completely fallen apart, that no one is engaged. Students are coming to class without answering questions. People, he He's a great teacher, but literally can't get people to not use their phones. Um, Which correlates when people cell phone adoption really took in with right. everyone else and then well yeah when you attention. look at all like there are a lot of different um studies out there especially gene twenge which talks about how after 2012 we um i'm <clears throat> sorry we tipped over 50 percent of adoption for smartphones um and so that it was interesting how he sort of said like after 2014 it's just so, like all fallen apart um and of course, he uses flip <laughs> and he was like it's completely changed everything like students it gives them sort of this sense of like ownership, like, hey, I can do this. Like I'm you're being challenged. He called it something like classroom professionalism or yeah. something like that. And I love that word. He was just like, it's just like I'm creating like like a professionalism level in my classroom. And this is sort of the way that we work, which is how life really works. Is yeah, you go to work, you, you can be on your phone the whole time. So what listeners might not know is that flipped actually locks you out of your phone. Yeah, well, there's different there's different levels. Okay. Um, so there is one uh, where yeah you're locked out of all of your apps, but then there's this other more more light mode where you just turn it on and you can exit it at any point. And what it's doing is tracking the okay. same way that a Fitbit you turn it on, it tracks your run. You turn it off, your run is finished. Um, if you kept it going, then that's more time spent off your phone. Um, so it's that that that's how the two different uh, features work. How come you created Flipped? That's Christian's story. Um, I when I moved to Canada in 2008, I was here as a refugee, and during my time here, my first year, I was going through a process where I had already finished high school. I couldn't go to university. I couldn't get a job. So I was kind of like, I kind of have to chill for a year, um, and I wanted to really maximize that year. So I had to figure out how am I gonna sp- like better spend my time. Like, what are the things that I'm gonna do? to make sure that it doesn't feel like I wasted a year of my life. Um, so I got into like yoga, reading all these different activities. Um, and then eventually when I got to university, I, I moved away. I'm, I became really close with my younger brother who's 11 years younger than me. Um, and I gave him his very first phone. I'm like, dude, we got to stay connected 24 seven. You know, I want to make sure that I don't miss out on all the things that you are happening in your life. Um, and almost after I gave him his phone, I realized how much he changed. He became someone that became quiet we'll go to his room and just play with his phone and i felt responsible I'm like i gave him the phone i impacted his life and i don't want to take it away how can i use technology to make it cool to disconnect um and then alana and i started talking about the idea of you know let's find out if this is a real problem and we went to dundas square like walk, walked on the street and asked people hey how do you feel about people using their technology no one really talked about themselves everyone talked about the problem with someone else uh, but that's when it kind of clicked that we are, all of us are kind of offended by the way people use technology around us. Um, so we decided to start Flipped. Um, that's really when we started. We thought it, we thought it was going to be a, a parental tool app to get parents and their kids off their phones. But it ended up taking a whole different spin once we put it on the app store. If you could articulate maybe in a sentence, what, what was your hope in creating Flipped? What did you want to see happen culturally? I wanted people to be aware of what they're doing in the moment and if they were on their phones like i wanted if no if no one's on their phones if we're out for dinner they should be the ones it's like oh out of etiquette i shouldn't be on my phone everyone else is engaging with each other like kind of create a, a culture um where it's okay to be disconnected that was that was the goal mm. i do see that um especially with uh since our user base is mostly younger um so they're between you know, 16 and 24 years old or so, 
Um, like the feedback that we're getting from some of them is stuff like, you know, I was given my first phone and no one ever told me or showed me how to use it or how to manage my time with it. And Flipped is teaching me that. And I just find that so awesome. So that if we're doing anything right, then I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. Which goes back to my little brother, right? It's like, I don't want to, I don't live at home to teach him, but it's like, can we create something to create that culture shift or that behavior it's like oh okay i have to disconnect when i'm with my family or when i'm when i'm having dinner yeah. or you know phones became like the cigarette and people were just pulling them everywhere and eventually we kind of been pushing them out to mm -hmm. do it outside in canada it's like you can't even do it like outside of the restaurants like go go away <laughs> um so that's that's sort of like sometimes i see some similarities there what's the biggest struggle that you hear everyday people talking about when it comes to disconnecting from their phones struggling with disconnecting um that's hard <laughs> little people just would they don't even think about a period of time and they just think that's hard for us we pretty much unplug over the weekends um we still we still use our our phones you know here and there but we're unplugged from our work um and that's been something that people have sort of looked at us uh, pretty critically about um, like oh wow you don't do any work over the weekends you don't check your emails and that kind of stuff and we're like well no like I, I we do I think a great job prioritizing over the week um, obviously if there's something incredibly urgent we would tend to it um, but it's just to me like if you're if you're just constantly plugged in then I don't think that you're being your most productive and efficient self. Um, so for us, it almost forces us like, you know, 7 p.m. on a Friday night, like that's it. You're done. You can't keep it going into the Saturday and Sunday. Um, you know, obviously there's every once in a while we do have to come in and do stuff. Um, but I find that's been an interesting um, critique from others when it, we're talking about what unplugging means to us, mm. which in many cases is disconnecting from our work and making sure that we're you know, jomoing it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, are you getting that particularly from founders? Like, is that in? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. The startup then, scene, it's just all like work hard, be connected all the time, be sending emails. And it's like a bragging thing. It's like, I'm working harder than you, but it's like, are you? Because I, I'm a, I'm an athlete outside yeah. of, outside of work. Like I train, I do all these things and I take my rest period very serious. Like in, in fact, like Alana's always like, you got to do yoga, you got to stretch, like it's important for the rest of your body. And on the weekdays, we're we're like going hardcore here. Like we're going, coming early, leave late, getting everything done. And then the weekends is our, is our rest period. And sometimes when we talk about it, people just give us like the, the look of like, okay, these guys just are not, maybe they're not working as hard. And we're like, do we agree with that? <laughs> yeah, no, I, th I think the complete opposite. I think we're working more efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the way that I, I look at it. Um and yeah, with, with founders, especially like I, I talk a lot about work-life balance and I, I really don't care if people wholeheartedly disagree with that statement. So many people do. They're like, no, it's life balance. Like your work needs to be woven into everything you do. And I'm just like, but as a, as a leader, as a manager of people, I wouldn't want someone working all weekend and I would want to encourage them to go have a hobby. I want you to feel like you can be having a side hustle if you want one. Like I want to encourage people to make sure that they're unplugging from their work so that they can be better employees when they are working. Um, so for me, I think that truly is having work-life balance. Um, and I, I, yeah, we I'm push that. advocate. We that. push that. Like on our Monday meetings, the first thing we ask people, it's like, how was your weekend? What did you do? Not, mm -hmm. let's not dive right into work right away. It's like, we're all human. We all must have had a fun weekend. The weather was great. What did you do? And, and you know, that personal level that it's, it's okay to invest on yourself. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That must make for a really great working culture, especially as a startup. I hope so. Yeah. I, well, I, I gave a presentation yesterday that was about hiring um, and, you know, growing your first team. It was to a bunch of very early stage founders with Founders Institute here in Toronto. Um, and that was one of the things that I was saying is like, this is actually a point of differentiation for you. You could be the company that works everyone to the bone that has, you know, high rates of burnout, or you could actually like a company here in Toronto, like Borrowell, um, who Eva, I've spoken to a number of times, cares deeply about work-life balance. Um, and she has a fantastic team, has, you know, enjoyed really high growth. 
Um, and I think that you can choose which kind of company you want to be and what kind of person you want to be. Are you always plugged in or do you find joy in missing out and, you know, getting out there and, uh, you know, invest, like Christian said, investing in yourself and making sure that you're giving yourself that time to grow and become a better person. Or for athletes, right? We just need that resting period. Yeah, totally. Exactly. If you look at athletes, imagine someone training like 24 seven, right? You know, that that's not possible. You need to, to rest. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, totally. That's a, it's a really good analogy. We constantly are, are thinking about this in terms of like fitness and mm. stuff and how it affects the body and the mind. So yeah. This episode is brought to you by hover.com. Everyone's got their thing. My thing is the joy of missing out and Hover's is the joy of free domain registration privacy. Hover is an incredible company actually based here in Canada, which is where I live. And I use Hover for all of my domain registration and I have for years and years. I'm thrilled that they are here on board with the JomoCast in the very first season. And as a listener, you can go to hover.com forward slash JomoCast to get your next great idea registered in a domain at Hover. So thank you to Hover for sponsoring season one of the JomoCast. This wasn't a prepared question that I had for you, but it's something that I read this morning. Um, There's a a web company in Vancouver called Domain 7, and I'm on their email list. And my friend is the person that writes this newsletter every couple of weeks. And she was talking about, you know, Simon Sinek's why, right? Like start with why. But their founder, their CEO challenged that and basically said that the how is, if not more important, at least equally important and how you build your team and also how you just build your business. And I think that's something that I've wrestled a lot with with Jomo is how do I with integrity bring this m- you know, this movement and this conversation forward in a way that aligns with the value of human connection, the value of just the mess of human relationships. Um, There isn't an, you know, an obvious solution to the problem of digital overuse. I think that's a silver bullet for every person. I don't know if that you have found that to be true. Like everyone has unique professional and personal demands. And so, you know, what works for you, you know, in terms of exercise isn't necessarily um, the answer for another person. I think the how is really important. I, and I hear you talking about that as founders, you know, that, that I hear that that is a big value for you, how you guys lead your team, how you personally, um, yeah, model that within the founder community. I think that's really inspiring and like completely lines up with the values of flipped, right? (laughs) Like what you're trying to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think, yeah. And from, from early on, we always believed in what it was that we were doing and what we were trying to accomplish. Um, I think it's definitely evolved over time. Um, but the message is still there and, and, and the why has only gotten stronger. And you're right. I've never really thought about the how being just as important, if not possibly more. I've never thought about that because we're all just like the why, the why, the why. It's like start with why. <laughs> um, but start with how. Maybe that's <laughs> maybe that should be or the book. and how. You know, and how are you doing it? You and know, how, how is your team how is your team actually flourishing? How are you actually flourishing? Yeah. If the goal is human flourishing, then how we're doing it, I think matters just as much. Totally. I yeah. love that. Well, I think that goes back to our values and it's like do we are we doing the right things? and getting towards the right goal. And you, you and I constantly check with ourselves. We're like, are we, do, are we being the leaders that we want to be? Are mm-hmm. we being mindful about the things that we're doing? Are we being the people we want to be too? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I know if, if we were working ourselves, just draining ourselves and never finding space to unplug. And, um, you know, the one that I hate is like founders. And I know we're, we're, move, we're talking a lot about entrepreneurship, but I think it has a lot to do with Jomo. Um, because like founders who sort of are like, I haven't taken a vacation in two years. And I'm just like, well, then you must like not be very healthy at all. <laughs> like, I yeah. come, we come back from like taking time off and we come up with right. ideas, yeah. um, with, with new perspectives. It's like important to sometimes take a step back, look at what's happened. It's like, Absolutely. how can this be, this be better? Cause sometimes we're like in the weeds, we're in like in, in the soup and we're cooking. And sometimes we want to be the chef and kind of like <laughs> look at it and be like, Things are looking good. Like I'm not part of the soup. Yeah. I'm actually making the soup. But sometimes you are in the soup and you can't see anything around you. 
That's the way that I see it. Christian, I really like your analogies a lot. Yeah, I, yeah, that's, that, that's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> the soup. Okay, I'd love for you guys to share. You shared one already, that teacher, you know, that he had these prime years. Um, d- can you share another great success story um, that's come across your path? Yeah, well, I mean, so the the cool thing about uh, connecting with professors as your consumer is that they love to do research. So they've been doing, we have how many right now that are doing their own research in their, in their classes? It's At least crazy. like six or so. Yeah, they're just like, and then sharing all the data. And a couple of departments. They're so excited about it. Um, and so I would say one, which you would almost think would be the opposite would occur was she introduced Lipton in her class. Um, I think it was 250 students. And uh, her DFW rates, which is uh, getting a grade of D, F, or withdrawing from the course, actually all decreased. Um, And you would think that someone who is being imposed upon to use something like Flipped, um, which is asking them to unplug for a semester, someone who would really hate that idea would be like, oh, screw this course. Like, I'm going to go take something else, Um, especially if it's like a Psych 100 course. But the fact that it actually was reduced... Um, and everyone's grades improved that it's like, to me, early evidence that something like this is, is so necessary, especially for first year college students that, you know, have never been told you have to unplug. It's really important for your mental and physical health. Um, when you're going in transitioning to something like a college education, that's really demanding and life changing. Um, and so to me, I think, yeah, if, if we have any evidence at all that we can help, um, you know, 18 year olds and 19 year olds going away for school for the first time. Like that's, that's really exciting for me. That's on the education side, but on the consumer side, like we just started doing like challenges where you can do how many minutes can you get in a month? And there's a couple of people there that have just, I'm like, are they cheating or are they spending 24 seven pretty much using flipped? And then they'll take a step back to use their phone for like five minutes and then they continue their day with flipped. And it's crazy. Like Emily has I don't know. She she must spend. I we're, it gets very competitive, and I start always like on the top this three. In the other like hemisphere, named Emily, who's at the top of our leaderboard right now. He's like neck and neck with. I'm, her. I'm always like, what is she doing? Like she's just all day, and like I want to learn more about. Like we we usually talk to like our users, and she's one of our ambassadors. But you know, it's it just blows my mind of how some people make this part of their everyday life, and this is how they want to spend their day, and they want to be mindful of their cell phone, and just. Just implementing something that little into the app and then seeing the huge impact and competition and, and people wanting to spend time disconnected um, it just kind of has blown my mind in the last month, I think, since we implemented mm-hmm. it now. And now people are starting their own challenges, uh, which yeah. is cool to see, too. What would be an example of a challenge? So it's it's exactly like a step challenge. Um, so it's out of, you know, this month. If you usually there will be like some sort of threshold that you're trying that everyone on the leaderboard is trying to reach and you're just like climbing up the leaderboard whoever reaches like I'm on my Garmin in like a 60,000 step challenge per week um which is yeah you'd have to do a little less than like 9,500 a day steps or so um so this is exactly the same in that it's how many minutes per month can you achieve and we give them like can you get to 10,000 um I started with 5,000 five. and then everybody just went did 5,000 in the first week I'm like that was too easy uh, <laughs> let's try something let's try something different um and and we're just still learning from what our users are doing and we're like okay let's try something else and we we kind of just test theories there and and then learn from from them like mm-hmm. we were users but some some of our users are like crazy champions and we're like they need something harder. They need something better. Um, so that's sort of what we learn. How's your brother doing? Good. Uh, <laughs> my brother now, it's all about wellness, eating healthy, meditation. Wow. Um, very self-aware. He's he completely turned around, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've seen him growing up since he was like a little kid and yeah. kind of go through all his chapters of life. Yeah. Eight to 18. Yeah. yeah. It's been... Quite something to, well, it's quite something to watch uh, someone from a generation that's like a decade younger than myself and watch them grow up in the world that we are now in. And I think like things are are a lot more challenging for young people um, these days compared to the way that it was when I was 16, 17 years old. Like I remember when I got Facebook and, um, you know, what that sort of, how that sort of 
impacted everyone's lives, but it wasn't like all consuming. There was nothing that was all consuming back then um, when it came to technology. And so like, I, I think that it's shifted um, that, you know, the way that we used to do things has now shifted for the most part online, but I do think that a lot of it has gotten a lot harder. Um, So anyone who can sort of overcome that um, and not, you know, succumb to that whole thing that everyone else does i think like especially in your brother's case he's 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 done a really good job of having self-awareness and not constantly being plugged in he's totally his own person and like doesn't care what anyone thinks which is cool yeah <laughs> so i think everything worked out <laughs> that's pretty amazing i think i i want to close on just the, when i walked in here i've known christian and alana for a while but they told me at the start of this morning's interview that they're actually a couple uh which is super awesome and i'm curious how you guys keep each other in check around technology because technology has become a really big point of conflict in a lot of relationships you know one person will pull it out and then you know there's all these unspoken rules so then the other one will pull it out and then you know 45 minutes later they're sitting you know people are sitting on the couch together not talking to each other and these things just happen so how do you guys uh call each other to some accountability around that we do have rules exactly like that. So if we are out somewhere and it's like, okay, I need to check something because like maybe we want to look up um, where we where we want to go out for dinner tonight or something. If one of us pulls out our phone, the other one can't. So we can't be those two people sitting at the restaurant with both of our phones out. So like <laughs> if if I do and he like just instinctively also does, I like I'm just like no, I can't. I I Amazing. literally like, cannot be that that couple when we're out. Um, and so I'll you tell you, I'm like, no, I'm on my phone right now. You can't also be on your phone. Just like sit and like, I'll just be a second. <laughs> yeah, we have that. And then like when we go to like events or dinners or something, it's like, I'm going to dinner. Do not expect to yeah. hear from me until like I'm I'm done. And, you know, we, we don't want to be that person that is like texting in the middle of a dinner or a networking event. Because a lot of the times in a networking event, people will pull out their phones because they're uncomfortable and you can use it as a way to be like, oh, I didn't network because you were texting me or something. Yeah. Um, so it's just like, I got to go do something. I'll be back to you. So it's just like, we don't need to also be connected 24 seven. It's like, okay, to go each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, we work together, we train together. So it's like, if we have an event or something like this, go do you. And, and yeah. then we, we will have something to talk about. And, and yeah, I think we've, we've done a pretty good job with that. I, yeah. I think starting a business together is already a challenge and, we're spending a lot of time together. So we have to create our own rules of like, when we step out of work, work stays behind. When we get home, it's just like a, a different conversation. Um, how we use our technology around other people, we have to be mindful that um, we don't, we're also not like huge social media posters or anything like that. So mm -hmm. like, I kind of on purpose, if I go to a trip, I will wait a couple of days until I post a picture. I'm like, kind of let that moment absorb. I'm like, Oh yeah, I really like that. Maybe I'll post this one a few days later, mm. but now like as I'm doing, it's like posting or posting. I try mm. not to do that. And then, but also when it comes to when we do post, like when we travel, we do like to share our story, like Instagram stories because we know our friends are going to get to see them. So we kind of actually do that together. So like, we'll make sure that we'll, we'll take a picture and like, oh, is your picture the one that we should use? And, and we both, it's like a collaborative, a collaborative mm. experience that the both of us sort of do together. Um, which I don't, I don't know if other couples do stuff like that. Um, but it's like, we, we are either, you know, very, uh, conscious about like not using it, um, you know, completely unintentionally around the other person where like, we're both just like on our phones. But then when we do use our, our devices, it's, it's very intentional. Oh, we, we often even go like, oh, like, here's what I'm doing. I need to do this. And then like to explain to the other person, like, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not trying to ignore you right now, but I just need to be checking this thing. And then I put it away. Like we're, yeah, the intention and awareness is very high between us for sure. Um, and I can see why, de definitely why um, if there are couples that don't have that, why that would be incredibly challenging because you're just basically fighting for attention between a phone and you <laughs> yeah <laughs> like your partner you want your partner's attention and if they are giving more of it to their phone I would be I would be incredibly frustrated by that um and yeah now that we, the more I, I talk about it I'm starting to see like some of the people in my life who maybe do that a little too much and and probably owe it a little bit to their partner to be more aware and conscious mm. about their use 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are incredible strategies for experiencing Jomo as a couple. So thank you for those. I've never even really thought about that. Yeah. That's just like. That's a lot of intentionality. Even the thing of when one has one a phone out and the other doesn't. I've never heard that before. Really? That's a huge one for us. But like, you're, you're a big one about that too. You're always yeah. like, don't take your phone out. I'm like, <laughs> like I'm not going to take that couple. Yeah, yeah, I hate that. Yeah. Both sitting there staring down. I don't know. I find Fridays when I walk out of the office, like computer gone, cell phone gone. And then it's just like, oh, it's Monday. Where's my, where's my computer? Where's my yeah. cell phone? Uh, I kind of do that. My mom doesn't love it. She's like, <laughs> when do I talk to you? It's just like, oh, you can just come over. And then I, but I, I'm also not like the one calling a lot of people either. It's just like, if I'm with my friends right now, I enjoy the people that are around me at that moment. Um, someone else texts me for another plan, then I'll go hang out with them and then I'm, I'm with them. What's I'm going to close on this. Alana, what's the biggest thing bringing you joy these days? The biggest thing bringing me joy is um, managing an amazing group of people um, and watching our business grow with absolute disbelief and how far we've come. Um, and how it's, it's made me, uh, just, I think a much stronger person, um, and more confident, uh, as a leader, you know, I think when we first started this company, we didn't really know exactly what we were doing. Um, and this was a long time ago, so I'm really proud of where we are right now. Um, so yeah, my, my work and, and leadership and personal growth that I've achieved over the last couple of years, I would say that's what's bringing me the most joy right now. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. How about you, Christian? Well, I would have said the same thing, but since Elena <laughs> said that. Um, it can be the same thing. I will, I will say that in my personal life, um, with things that brings me joy is I've been training for a lot of races and what brings me joy is when I go for a long bike ride and to see how far my legs can take me or my body can go. I think those are the things that I'm like, holy crap, I can't believe I biked 150 kilometers, you know, went to Lake Simcoe or back or something. And it's just like my legs did that. Um, and I get through nature and I get to see, experience all the like, cars and birds and the water. And it's just like, that's awesome that my body can do that. And and I'm always kind of pushing into what's the next thing that I want to do. Alana's always laughing at me. It's like, seems like you always want to start like a new hobby, like slacklining or something like that. And I think all, <laughs> and I think all that goes back to when I moved to Canada, I was like, I always got to be learning, doing something. And every summer I'm like, I got to try to learn a new skill. I mean, I'm not great at slacklining, but I saw someone doing it at a park. I'm like, let's order one in Amazon and let's do it. And now we both are pretty I'll good at that. I'll show him a new yoga pose that took me like 30 days to figure out. And he's like, hmm, let me try. And he like gets right up there. <laughs> You're one of those people. <laughs> no, so, so some, things, some things are hard, but I, I think finding those little things that might seem hard or a challenge and figuring a way to do it. Even if it's hard, I think that is very rewarding. I think my last one that I did that was like changing a tire out of from a bike, like the tube. I did a horrible job the first three times. And Elena was like, why don't you just go to the shop and get it done? I was like, no, I have to get it done. Um, and that brought me joy. I was like, I did it like after the third time and it exploded the first few times. I'm like, I'm going to figure this out. And I was so proud of that. I love that. And I feel like that's a really amazing place to close because technology is most of technology is so focused on ease, right? And efficiency. Yes. And the reality is we have an incredible amount of pride. Like I'm hearing you both talk about when we accomplish something, when yes. we actually put in the hard work of doing something inefficient, like changing a tire or learning how to lead a team and growing a company that's actually creating a, a healthy profit, mm -hmm. right? And there's incredible yeah. joy in those things. And so um, our constant push for ease and efficiency doesn't always serve, but there's Absolutely. good in inefficiency as well. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think a challenge and overcoming a challenge is what ultimately makes you more confident and, and successful and feel like that, that sense of achievement. Celebrating the small wins. Yeah. And we yeah. do that in our personal very, life very and important. our work life mm -hmm. as well. Thank you both so much for being with me today. Hi, it was, thank you. It was great. Yeah, this was awesome. Well, thank you for listening. You can learn more about our guests in the show notes and by visiting jomocast.com. The Jomocast is edited and produced by Thomas J. Inge, musician and composer by day, podcast ninja by night. Special thanks to writer Rebecca Wigand, musician Peter Katz, and educator Adam Kaplan for their practical and moral support creating this season of the podcast. The Jomocast is listener supported. 
When you sign up as a patron at patreon.com forward slash JomoCast, you'll get access to many bonus episodes with me and digital sociologist, Dr. Jess Piriam. Plus, we'll send you a Jomo Manifesto letterpress print, stickers, and a handwritten card in the mail because I believe in the power of the personal. Plus, snail mail is just one of the most joyful things on earth. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review it on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you subscribe. And a five-star spectacular. Do you want more Jomo? Go to experiencejomo.com to sign up for a free week of Jomo quests to get you started on your journey. As always, remember, there is joy missing out on the right things. I'm your host, Christina Crook. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.